Hi everybody, Mrs. Host back with the truth about bats. In chapter six, they were putting out the mist nets and they caught a tiny yum yum and Ranger Mike was just letting him go. So on to chapter seven. The class stood on the bank of the river watching bats zipping in, in from all directions. These night peepers are the greatest, Keisha said. Look how fast those bats zero in on the insects. That's their sonar at work, Miss Frizzle said. Most of the bats darted over or around the mist nets, but every now and then one got caught. Here's a big brown, Ranger Mike called as he untangled a struggling bat. It doesn't look very big to me, Carlos said, when Ranger Mike showed us the brown furry creature clinging to his glove. It's a medium-sized bat, really, the ranger told us. Bigger than its cousin, the little brown bat, with its wings folded up like this, it looks small, but in the air, the wings spread out to more than a foot across. There are big brown bats in my neighborhood, D.A. said. I've never seen one, but the people down the street had one in their attic one summer. That's not surprising, D.A., Ranger Mike said. Brown bats, big and little, get around. In the U.S., they live in all 48 of the continental states. No sooner had we let the big brown bat go than we had more action at the nets. Oh dear, oh dear, look what's coming in now, Keisha cried. We turned around to see a flyer with enormous wings, maybe two feet across, swooping above the river. In the next instant, it seemed to stop in midair. It had flown right into the taller mist net. How to find a bug by Keisha. The bat sends out a series of ultrasonic clicks as it flies through the air. As the bat comes closer to the insect, the clicks get faster. The ultrasonic waves bounce off the insect and back to the bat's ears. Is it a bird, Phoebe asked. No need to worry about that, Phoebe, said Miss Frizzle. The birds are already asleep. Unless I miss my guess, our visitor is wearing fur, not feathers. You're right, Miss Frizzle, Ranger Mike said. This is a bat, and then some. Come and meet the Western Mastiff, the largest bat in the USA. Phoebe started to back away, but D.A. grabbed her hand. Come on, Phoebe, you don't want to miss this. Ranger Mike held the Mastiff gently but firmly. Its body was almost as long as his hand. It has the face of a dog, Carlos said. Weird. Does it bite, Phoebe asked. Only in self-defense, Ranger Mike explained. But it's, best, but it's best not to mess around with any bats. Some have strong jaws and could give you a bad bite. Then you could die, cried Phoebe. Bats carry a bad disease called rabies. That's what I've heard. Yes, a few bats do have rabies, said D.A., but most bats are healthy. Skunks and foxes are more likely to have rabies than bats. True, Ranger Mike said, but even though bats probably will not harm you, you should never try to pick up a bat or any other wild animal. Leave that to the experts like me. From the desk of Miss Grizzle. What sharp teeth you have. Bats use their sharp teeth to chew their food into tiny bits. Bats that feed on soft insects such as moths have weak jaws and soft bites. But bats that feed on beetles or other crunchy insects have stronger jaws to bite down hard. A word from Dorothy Ann. Some animals that have rabies act wild and even foam at the mouth, but a sick bat seems quiet and tame. Don't be fooled. Any bat that will let you get close to it is probably sick. Ranger Mike had to climb onto a rock to set the mastiff free. This one needs at least six feet of free fall to get airborne, the ranger explained. He held the mastiff as high as he could, then let go. The bat dipped, then soared off on its enormous wings. It was getting very late, and we still had not seen one spot of Ms. Frizzle's spotted bat. I hope that bat shows up soon, Wanda said with a yawn. I don't think I can stay awake much longer. The bat may not show up at all, Wanda, Ranger Mike said. Not many people have ever seen a spotted bat, and we don't know much about its habits. We think these bats might live in the cliffs near our rivers and lakes. One was caught here in Yosemite a few years ago. How big is it, Wanda wanted to know. About the size of the big brown, Ranger Mike said. It eats mostly moths and has a voice like no other bat. People are more likely to hear it than to see it. Hear it, Keisha asked. I thought we couldn't hear bats. We can't hear bat calls that are ultrasonic, Ranger Mike said. But some bats, such as the spotted bat, make echolocation sounds that are not quite so high-pitched. People can hear them very well. Does the call of the spotted bat sound anything like that, Miss Frizzle asked. We all stood still and listened, trying to hear what Miss Frizzle had heard. First, there was nothing. 
Then a harsh, high-pitched tick, 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 tick filled the air. That's it, Ranger Mike whispered. That's the spotted bat. <clears throat> where, where? We all turned toward the sound and stared as hard as we could through our night peepers. Then Miss Frizzle walked to the edge of the river and pulled a little net bag from the pocket of her bat outfit. She opened it and out flew a cloud of silvery moths. They seemed to blink like fireflies in the darkness. In the next instant, the dark shape of a bat came zooming in. It flew over our heads and we could see the white belly of the spotted bat. It caught several moths and was swooping down for another when it flew right into our mist net. And we'll continue with chapter eight next week. Have a great day, everybody.